All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm currently a student at the University of Southern California, and I'm currently the founder and the head of operations um, as a part of my project, Integral Perspective. And today, um, I actually am doing this code video with a good friend of mine from UCLA. His name is um, Dylan Jonati. And, you know, for pretty much for today, what we're going to be doing is um, obviously telling you our own college stories. Uh, very typical, like very similar to how I've been doing my other videos with a lot of other students. So in this video, we hope that you can see both of our perspectives from a student at USC and a student at UCLA. Obviously, rival schools, you can guys can vote later on who's the better school. But for the most part, um, we just want to give you guys a genuine college experience. So I guess first and foremost, um, Dylan, you can go first on this. If you could just obviously, you know, introduce yourself, um, your major, and, you know, I guess, you know, just, just in general, just a little bit about yourself. Okay. Sure. So, everyone, my name is Dylan Janati. I am an economic student at UCLA. And a little bit about me is that um, I've lived in Monterey Park for around, like, most of my life. But I used to live in Northern California. And I kind of had, like, the best of both worlds, I guess, of, like, San Francisco and moving down here to Los Angeles. and. Um, one of the things I did in Los Angeles was act like as a child, I used to be very into child acting and like going up to commercials, doing auditions, you know, doing all those things. Um, but I guess over time, I focused a lot more on my academics and being an actor is pretty difficult when you're also trying to uh, educate yourself as well. Cause there is, uh, there's like some sort of school that you have when you go on set or something, but it's, uh, it's not the greatest thing. Um, like they basically have some teacher there that uh, makes sure you do some independent work that your actual teacher assigns to you. So, so yeah, over time, I just started focusing a bit more on my academics and um, yeah, so I grew up around uh, the 66, the general like San Gabriel Valley area, and I uh, did a bunch of things in high school, which we can talk about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess, you know, just to introduce myself. So obviously, I, I didn't go into acting. I didn't have like kind of like the interesting <laughs> lifestyle that Dylan had. Um, but I also grew up within the San Gabriel Valley um, SGB area as well, too. Um, I mean, pretty much for the most part, I guess for me, I was very academic oriented. You know, I like playing sports every now and then too. I wasn't the greatest at it. Never played like varsity sports in high school. In fact, I only made it to my freshman um, team in my first year of high school. So that was all I did for like soccer. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I was very academic oriented. And I think for me, I guess for, you know, just my personal story is the one general thing that I've started to notice throughout my entire academic uh, path is that it was always about stereotypes. I think, you know, being an Asian American, we kind of, associated it with a lot of stereotypes around our you know specific culture whether that be um kind of like the stereotypes of always needing to get good grades the stereotypes of you know having to be a doctor engineer lawyer like it's not uncommon to those that um grew up in those kinds of households i was very fortunate enough to not have a family that very pressured me into academics and i think it kind of contributed to me doing well because i was you know passionate about what i was doing interested in studying things that i wanted to study and so for the most part um yeah and eventually when i came on to applying to usc and going to specifically my major of human biology. Um, so I actually chose human biology because I was really interested in sciences. I'm actually not pre-med. I'm kind of interested in going into like a PhD or academia in the future, kind of research oriented. So I think for me, it's always, it was always about breaking those typical conventions and trying to go away from what the standard norm of the Asian American community was. So I guess, you know, moving on to another question that for us to answer is, uh, like you mentioned, Dylan, yeah, you're majoring in economics. And I believe you also have a film minor, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. also minoring in film. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to touch that. up on, like, yeah, it's all good. Uh, if you want to go ahead and touch up on, uh, you know, why that major and minor combination, like why you chose to study that specific field. All right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I could kind of bounce off of you because you were talking about how your family uh, didn't really push you towards, um, I guess, having to be a doctor, or having to be a lawyer, or engineer. Uh, same thing for me. Um, I grew up with just my mom. So she she let me do whatever I really wanted to do, honestly. And I, it, I was pretty independent um, in high school. Like I had, I got a bike for like 30 bucks in my sophomore year. And I started like riding that around and just going to different events and things. And um, yeah, so 
I I knew about like those stereotypes about uh, Asians having to do become a doctor, having to become a lawyer. And I guess some of that also bled into uh, why I didn't want to pursue acting as much because people were saying, oh, if you go into the arts or if you try and become a better actor, um, you're you're going to be a starving artist or something. And I think uh, that was kind of detrimental, detrimental to me because I'm in eighth grade. That was like the turning point, I guess, in like how much uh, I put into acting and everything. Like I stopped getting headshots, which are like those pictures, you know? Yeah. Or, yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I, I kind of stopped my passion for that in favor of academics, but I've like grown and realized like I could, I could sort of do both. Um, and I did kind of do that in high school. Um, but I think, I think I chose economics and film because I, I want to do that. Like I want to mm-hmm. be able to um, embrace both art and uh, academia. I think the, the cool thing about economics is like, it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's very different from film or like the arts because mm-hmm. you're trying to devoid yourself of emotion okay? and you're yeah. trying to think of just the most rational decision um like the most recent economics class i took was uh on is on multivariable and economics it's called economics 11 mm-hmm. and apparently it was it was a kind it was a pretty hard class like i thought i was gonna fail it but i didn't so that was <laughs> okay. cool uh-huh. um but but yeah the, this this class like really showed me how uh it showed me how economics tries to make everything about um the mathematical decision and the raw decision of choosing something not based off like any happiness or any like sadness or anything. So that's one of the cool things that I found, Mm but um, yeah, so I am pretty interested in like getting into the entertainment industry. And I think um, by having background that are, that I already have as an actor and also in the film industry um, that could help me out. So that's one of the paths that I'm looking at is, uh, trying to see what I can do in the entertainment industry, either as like a business executive mm-hmm. or as someone who is um, maybe directing, writing, or even acting. So I, I don't think that your major really dictates where, you, where you're going to go in life. Like I know a lot of psychobiology majors that don't yeah. use their degree. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, like specifically at UCLA, like I, I know a lot of psychobio that aren't really like super into psychobio but have something else that Mm -hmm. they're really uh, passionate about and i think that we can that i can do the same with um with economics and uh and film yeah Uh, yeah that's that's why i chose it yeah yeah no i definitely agree with you especially that last part um you know what you study in college doesn't really determine what you're going to do i know a lot of you know even in my field of biology a lot of people who study biology don't end up going into biology they go into some like Mm -hmm. business related things so i thought it was really interesting um, so I guess, you know, speaking on my half, so for me, I guess before I applied to college, I was really interested in science. Like science was the one thing I was super passionate about ever since um, elementary school. And one thing that really grabbed my attention throughout like elementary school and like middle school was astronomy. I really loved astronomy. I was, I wanted to be an astrophysicist, um, you know, study that kind of stuff. And then I hit freshman year of high school and I was like, no, I hate math. And I knew like astrophysics needs a lot of math and physics. And I was like, you know, as much as I love science, I'm not a big fan of the computational aspects of it. So I was trying to look for other things in science I was interested in. So I think it was when I took AP Biology in my sophomore year, I was like, wow, I actually really like this. I like the fact of all the hands-on labs, the ability of me being able to experiment on something and just kind of taking the general basis of what you learn and actually being able to apply that. Like I know they say like, oh, you want to learn something and be able to apply it to the real world. And I couldn't find that with a lot of other subjects um, other than like science. Like science, I was actually able to see how it connects to our daily lives. You know, biology is a huge part of our entire just every how everything runs so i was like okay yeah i can see myself doing this but whenever i told people in um, high school that i was going to study biology they were all like oh pre-med pre-med i was like i don't really want to be a doctor i can't really stand the side of blood so if i was a physician and i end up going to surgical practices those patients probably would not be so well so (laughs) i was like thinking like yeah i'm not going to be a doctor i was like i was really focused on getting research but a lot of people were telling me that you know research doesn't make money you go into that field you won't do so well and i worried about it for quite a while so when it came to senior year and I was actually applying to different colleges, um, you know, in the application, they ask you, oh, would you like to go into a pre-professional track, pre-med, pre-law or whatnot? 
And then I just impulsively hit pre-med on every single application I said, because I was like, you know, why not? I'm just going to do it. So I actually started off as a bio sci major. Um, I didn't actually go into human bio yet, but I started off as bio sci, got into college. And, you know, I really liked bio. I still did really well in it. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I, I attended a couple of seminars about pre-med and I was like, oh, this is pretty interesting. I think being a doctor wouldn't be too bad. But I didn't like the environment I was in. Um, in my opinion, for at least for my experience, the, the pre-med um, environment was pretty toxic. Uh, a lot of students were really fighting for grades. And it just seemed like, for me, I had such a hard time having the same passion that other people did for medicine. Like people were super passionate about volunteering and stuff. And while I love volunteering and helping people out, I couldn't reciprocate those same actions. And I was thinking like, you know, I'm not really as passionate as these people are about pre-med. I'd rather focus on the more academia and research aspects of it. So I actually switched my major from biological sciences to human bio, because I was like, you know what, human bio is a lot more specific. Um, I'm actually focusing on a concentration in health and disease. So it gives me something to actually go into um, more specifically, because when you go into research, you obviously have to find some specific field to search into. And then on top of that, what I was really interested in also studying, which is, I'm not going to, I guess, list my two minors. Um, I have a minor in healthcare studies and a minor in biomedical therapeutics. So biomedical therapeutics, essentially, is just pharmacology. So just drug marketing and whatnot because I was really interested in understanding the medical practices of how that relates to the entire field of medicine. On the contrary, with my minor in healthcare studies, I was really interested in how the healthcare systems works. Because let's be real, in the United States, um, we don't have the be best healthcare system policies or whatnot. So I was really interested in finding ways to, you know, either create innovations to help fix the sector or just, you know, improve it holistically. So I chose that minor because it gives me a better way to dive into it. And still in the end, even though my focus is getting a PhD, going into academia and research, I think that, you know, regardless, like you mentioned before, whether I go into healthcare um, work or whether I go into research or whatnot, um, you know, it doesn't matter what you major and you have so much versatile options from what you take from university. So yeah, I guess, uh, you know, moving on to another question now, uh, obviously the colleges. So I know you're at UCLA, I'm at your rival school, USC. So I guess for you first, um, why did you choose UCLA? Well, why did I choose UCLA? Okay, well, this is, uh, I mean, just quite frankly, like UCLA was the best school that I got into. <laughs> um, because, I mean, I also applied to USC because Marshall is a pretty good business school. Mm -hmm. And I, um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, but like the reason why I'm pretty interested in business is um, because like I've done some projects in high school, like I created a 5k run during high school and it, it was just really fun to get a bunch of people together and create something that would benefit the community and also fundraise for the community. Um, it fundraised for a bunch of different activities like speech and debate, uh, cross country mm -hmm. band, etc. Right, And um, I just thought that was pretty fun. And I thought if I kept learning about business, then that would help me in like anything I wanted to do uh, just cause I think like economics is pretty applicable to a lot of like decision-making and uh, things like that. Um, but I actually was really interested in political science before and I applied to most of my schools under political science because um, I mean, we, we met through speech and debate and <laughs> you know, so like I, uh, I was pretty like involved in, um, Asian American politics because mm -hmm. of a summer organization I was a part of called APF Mobilize. They introduced me to some um, some like elected officials and like I started getting my connections and networking and learning about the Asian American uh, political community because I growing up and I, I didn't think that Asian Americans were in politics and stuff but like mm -hmm. growing growing up in like and living I guess um, I guess like growing up in high school, if that makes sense. I mean, yeah. throughout, throughout my years in high school, like I started to realize that there are a lot of Asian Americans who are involved in politics in, um, in the Monterey Park and San Gabriel Valley mm -hmm. community. And that was just really inspiring to me. So I was also very involved in that. Um, but I, I chose UCLA just because it was uh, the best school that I got into. Um, I was really only choosing between UCLA and Occidental, which is also a pretty good school. I was I was uh, I was fortunate enough to like get into Occidental and Ford him and like make the joke, wow, I could either become Donald Trump or President Obama, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I could have graduated yeah. from East Respective School. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so I was um I was really just thinking about UCLA or or Oxy. 
um because I, I know like a lot of I, well I know I know some people who like got into Berkeley and LA but mm-hmm. chose Oxy instead because it does provide a different environment um like a private school environment that um and it's like a liberal private art school environment like yeah. I, I don't know I yeah I didn't I didn't went to, I didn't go to the uh visit Oxy day or anything I, I mm-hmm. went to actually no Bruin day wasn't on the same day but I just um I just decided not to go after I went to Bruin day and okay. um yeah I just I uh, I just think I really like fell in love with UCLA um because there was this uh I forgot what it's called but like I forgot what the name of it, like the I guess the category of it is, but it's called um the Southeast Asian Admit Weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm Indonesian, so that's why I was like they fielded me out and like found out yeah. oh, he's Indonesian. We're gonna bring him. We're gonna bring him. Show him how good UCLA is and everything. <laughs> so that's basically what the program is. Um, I participated in it this year, but we had to do it virtually because of reasons, right? That we already know. Um, yeah, and. I, and yeah, that that really made me like enjoy UCLA, and it made me realize how many people from my school were at UCLA. So uh, I felt like I was pretty supported, um, and it showed me how that there was a community already there for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas, like, I guess I could have gone and seen what Occidental had for me, but uh, I just decided not to because. Um, I've been going to UCLA, like, for the most part of my life, like, just visiting, you know, just driving past it whenever we would drive past for, like, auditions or something. Maybe we would, like, just check it out or something. And and I also had um, some, like, short films that I did there when I was younger. And um, it was really funny because uh, one, one of the directors of the short films that I was a part of when I was, like, nine or ten mm-hmm. um, messaged me, DM'd me on Instagram and then I was like, yo, Dylan. <laughs> and then I said, yo, what's up? <laughs> and it, it was so crazy because uh, mm-hmm. she, she gave me Pokemon Soul Silver when I was younger. And like, I still have that. And <laughs> and now I'm going to UCLA and um, also like being interested in film too. It, it just felt like very full circle to me. So I, I decided to pick UCLA. Um, I... Like the the biggest school that I got like waitlisted for was U Chicago, but I heard okay. a lot of people got waitlisted for U Chicago. So uh, I don't know. Fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. um, U Chicago. Like I, I was, I really procrastinated on like a letter of continued interest because mm. I mean U Chicago is like a good school, right? And yeah. my um my essay to U Chicago was like such a meme. It was about like uh, it was like I. I was dreaming that I was in this specific cafe because um, in my essays, I like made it super, super specific where I was to pretend like I actually went, like I visited, but I've never gone to Chicago. It's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but I, I made up this, um, this really like elaborate story and, and I researched a lot of um, political sciences there and also the, the buildings and everything there. So I guess that, that essay was good enough for a wait list. And then, um, but I, I I didn't I didn't send a letter of continued interest, which is basically just a way to show like oh I'm still interested, please get me off the wait list. And mm-hmm. then uh, I I eventually sent it like two weeks after they sent me that I, I was waitlisted. And then like a few hours later they say oh you're rejected now or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was yeah that that was uh, my waitlist experience at in Chicago. <laughs> So at the end, I just had um, UCLA and Oxy to pick from, mm-hmm. and I just picked UCLA because um, I think I think those two are like very opposite schools in terms of UCLA is very big. There's a lot of people. Oxy mm-hmm. is pretty small. There's not too many people, but I picked UCLA because of uh, more opportunities. I saw like more people as um, having more opportunities to talk with people and network because that's kind of how I saw um, the college experience. Like aside mm-hmm. from educating yourself, you're also gonna learn about the people in this world you know like yeah it, there's there's so many different people in this world that you may have never interacted with or like never thought of interacting with and i think ucla has just so many diverse people um like from different parts of uh the world but also like different parts of california like different parts yeah. of california have very 
different people you know yeah and then who, who you may have interacted with um mm-hmm. like on a daily basis, basis back home so um yeah it's just ucla is such a like it just has so many opportunities but that, that was also like a scary part for me too because um with all these opportunities like what am i going to do you know what how can i just pick one so that was um also a tough thing but i i saw it as okay i'll just i'll just jump in so i'll see what happens and that that is why I am doing what I'm doing at UCLA. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think that was really great. I like how, you know, you mentioned the entire process of trying to figure it out, eventually deciphering, you know, there's, there's a lot of factors that play into choosing college. I yeah. think, um, at least for me, so I guess the biggest goals, because obviously I'm, so I'm going into science and I applied to mainly UC schools and pri- a lot of private schools. I actually didn't apply to UCLA. My family was a very USC heavy family, so I actually yeah. never applied to UCLA. So I don't know whether I, I would have gotten in or not. But I think it came down to USC and Berkeley. Because, you know, Berkeley is a really is very powerful for education mm-hmm. academics. Um, and I was, I believe I got accepted in for neuroscience. Um, UCLA obviously was biosci. So debating between the two, I had a lot to think about because I was thinking, okay, everyone is going to tell me to go to Berkeley because it's better for sciences. You know, UCLA, uh, USC, uh, um, you know, while it is a really good school, they're not really known for sciences as they are for like their cinematic school or like their business school. So it was definitely a concern of mine. I was like, mm, do I go to a school that's more known for their um you know, the specific major. And, you know, I kept thinking about it. And a lot of people would actually tell me that, um, you know, we're actually a lot older, not my peers, that it doesn't really matter where you went for your undergraduate experience, because in the end, you might go to graduate school, you might go somewhere else. That's when things will probably matter a little bit more. And those were from like uh, elders and like adults that would tell me that. So I, I actually took that into consideration because, you know, they've gone through the entire process. And even though times have changed, I do think that they carry some merit to some extent. So part of me was like, okay, so if I ignore the whatever school is better for the major aspect, um, let's just even the playing field again. So then was, at that point, um, another big factor came was tuition. So obviously you have financial aid, you get scholarships from schools and whatnot. Um, in terms of what schools gave me the best scholarships, it was mainly the UC systems and USC. So going to USC, if I going to USC, I don't have to pay anything. If I went to like, you know, Berkeley, I still have to pay a bit of money, even though it is a public school, it's a lot cheaper. You know, I did have to pay a little bit. Um, and, you know, obviously housing, I still have to cover and all that stuff. But for a lot of the out-of-state private schools I had, I didn't get any... Um, financial aid for them so I was like okay I'm just gonna limit myself to whatever was in California because those were the best schools that I had and I didn't mind staying in state or out of state I personally couldn't care less where I went um but it was just like I had to consider financial aid too because another thing that a lot of adults would tell me is that you know they spend years trying to recover from student debt and all the loans that they've taken out for college or graduate school and I know people that are still paying it throughout their 40s and 50s and I don't want to be in that position um especially for you know considering that if I want to go into academia and research that already has been preconceived of not making much money I don't want to have to put that pressure onto myself so yeah obviously then it came down to Berkeley and USC I think from there another factor I considered was how close I am to home Um, because obviously like we mentioned we're Southern California SGB area so going to USC I could easily come home every weekend if I wanted to and for the most part for actually a good portion of my freshman year I did come back home every week or every other week just to see family because I think I think one thing that really resonated to me when I was a senior in high school was that uh, one of my teachers told me that once you go into college, you are less likely to see your parents than you already were when you were younger. And what he meant by that was in high school, middle school, elementary school, you always came home to see your parents. Like, yeah, you went to school, but you always came home, saw your parents. Once you get into college, if you go somewhere that's completely far away, you only get to see them like every now and then during holidays, uh, summer break, winter break, those longer breaks. And it's, when you think about it, once you complete your time at university, you're already going to start um, going on to real world, finding your own job, fi- uh, making your own family or whatnot. So the chances that you see your own personal family that you grew up with starts to become a lot smaller and smaller as time goes on. And, you know, I definitely thought about that. I was like, okay, well, I have like two younger brothers too. I have a family that I'm really close with. I don't really want to start detaching myself completely away from that. So I decided, you know, being at Southern California, well, yes, I'm not going home every single day. I can still come home often enough to see them. So it's kind of like that transition between my youth to adulthood where I don't want to already start detaching away from it but kind of like transitioning and if I went to Berkeley I wouldn't have the chance to you know come uh, home like you know as often as I did back at USC so that was another factor and I think the finally what it came down to was what would provide the best holistic um, experience so I visited Berkeley I visited USC I mean obviously I visited USC um, and you know those two areas you know there's, a, there's like a kind of a stereotype that okay for example USC is in the heart of LA and Berkeley is you know located next to the city of Berkeley and that the surrounding area can, probably isn't the most safe to some people. They have that preconceived notion. 
But, you know, in the end, um, even though it also ignored that factor, I had to think about, okay, what about the networking options? Like, USC is known to have their whole Trojan family and huge networking options and opportunities available to them. Um, considering, like, Berkeley, where it's a much larger public school, maybe I won't get the opportunities the same as I do back at USC. So it really came down to a lot of different factors that played a role into me choosing USC, obviously, over UC Berkeley. And, you know, in the end, obviously, if I had to go back and look at, you know, how I approached this, I wouldn't say I really regretted anything. If I could have changed something, I think I probably would have started figuring out this information much earlier. Like, rather, rather than trying to figure out how to decide as soon as I got to colleges, I should have probably considered this while I was applying, just so I know that, okay, realistically, are you going to go to that school if you got accepted? Because I know for some people, they just apply to a college for the heck of it. So when I was applying to schools, I probably should consider like, am I really going to go here if I got accepted? Like, if this was the only school I got into, would I be content with going there? And I think I probably should have asked myself that a lot more um, when I was doing the process. So yeah, I guess, you know, that's kind of the decision of me getting to where I am today. And I guess, uh, you know, continuing off of the entire college, uh, our college lifestyles, I guess another big aspect of college is our extracurriculars. So I guess if you wanted to touch up on maybe one or two extracurriculars that you're participating in at UCLA and how that's been for you. All right. Um, actually, wait one sec. I need to go to the restroom real quick. Okay. Uh, just... All right. So coming back from that quick pause. Um, so I guess now talking about uh, extracurricular activities. Um, obviously, UCLA has a wide diversity of them and USC has their own. So I guess if you wanted to go and, um, like I mentioned before, elaborate on, I guess, like one or two activities that you're participating in at UCLA. All right, cool. Um, so, okay, so uh, I I think the main things that I've been involved in at UCLA is um, the Film and Photography Society, uh, the University Catholic Church, because I'm Catholic, so mm -hmm. religion and all, um, and uh, CCLEAR, which is the Southeast Asian Center for Learning, Education, and Retention. And I think the one I've been most involved in is CCLEAR, and um, the, what we do mainly is uh, retention efforts for Southeast Asians, like trying to uplift them um, through counseling and through um, events and such. It's been kind of hard the past quarter because we went online and everything, but mm -hmm. uh, that's the general gist of it. And the thing is for activities at UCLA for like different clubs and such. Mm -hmm. um, there's this large activities fair called the enormous activities fair because so great at naming. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they have this basically like a huge club rush. Um, mm -hmm. Like at my high school, we had like club rush where it would be a whole week. This would be like, I think, I forgot. It was like two or three days where uh, clubs would just be outside and you would just go in check them out actually no i think it was a day like a single day where uh we had to figure out like which clubs were interesting so that was kind of stressful but it was like it was like maybe a few hours maybe like six hours or mm -hmm. i forgot yeah or around around that time and uh, basically what i did is I, as i just went around trying to see um clubs to join and mm -hmm. since i'm in economics like i checked out a lot of the uh, Bruin, uh, I, there was like Bruin Asset Management, which is mm -hmm. about investing and such. Um, there's also like trading and investing, you know, a lot of different like trading, investing, um, yeah. real estate clubs. Actually, no, I think there's only one real estate club. But but anyway, like there are a bunch of different business clubs. And um, I was also looking into cultural clubs too. So the thing is, is like when I... Uh, when I went there, when I went to the Enormous Activities Fair and like tried to look at cultural clubs, I was looking for an Indonesian club because um, growing up, I, I didn't know too many Indonesian Americans, especially like Indonesian Americans who were interested in getting good at school and stuff. Yeah. Uh, most most were out there like you know vaping, hitting them, hitting the vapes <laughs> and stuff. So uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't I didn't really do that. So uh, I was trying to find like an Indonesian club to join and maybe learn from people, and. And I couldn't find it because I guess like they didn't advertise it, um, and I guess they didn't have like a booth at at the enormous activities fair, so I couldn't find them. Um, but I was also looking into like running because I was in cross country and track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I joined a 
I joined Bruin Runners for like a day and then I quit. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, the 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 path to like try and find um, clubs to be involved in is pretty difficult. Mm. Um, I I also like tried joining this uh, film fraternity and then I realized it wasn't for me, so I just stopped like rushing it. Mm. And yeah, it's it's kind of tough because I think like the first quarter I, I I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I just like went to a different bunch of activities like a bunch of meetings and saw what was good for me um also a lot of the business clubs are pretty pretty elitist like they (laughs) they, uh they they have like this cut down process and Mm -hmm. um they basically screen for like the big four companies and the other big companies all the big fancy companies and and everything so it was Mm kind of tough to get into those clubs so i i didn't get into them um but yeah the the main thing that i stuck with throughout my first quarter to now is um c clear and i learned about it through facebook like there was a Mm -hmm. there was an internship thing because um they have like different components and um i thought oh an internship that sounds cool because internships always sound cool so i um, applied for this internship with c clear and I didn't really know what to expect with it um, because it's a cultural organization. How do you, how do you teach people about that? Yeah. Um, but really what, what I learned was about um, like uh, Southeast Asian American cult- community conditions, um, like deportation, like uh, poverty, like um, segregated housing, things like that. And I found that really, really intriguing and I also found like the community there really fun to hang out with and um just be a part of so that was like a pretty big part of my uh first year Mm -hmm. and another community that I was a part of was like just my floor like my Uh, my dorm floor yeah because um I mean we saw each other like every day when we came back from class or something so we just started to hang out um but it wasn't like our entire floor but it was just like a few of us on our floor who who were cool you know i don't know (laughs) like we we just we just had i don't know we we were just able to mesh pretty well and um we made a group and yeah that was a pretty cool community that i had as well our 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 ra was pretty nice as well so that was fun um i learned a lot from her too and yeah i think uh the the main thing that that i learned from like trying to get involved my first year was that you can't really take the approach that you did in high school. Yeah. Because in high school I was involved in like almost everything. I think I, I like I had like a position or something in like 10 clubs Mm -hmm. or yeah, I had some sort of like thing going on in 10 different clubs Mm. and um, yeah. And I can manage that. And also I would wake up at like 6 a.m. for cross country practice and then like go to go back home at like 10 p.m. after yeah. rehearsals or something for uh, my for theater. But I can't do that in college. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just I would have less classes in college, but it felt more mentally draining mm-hmm. for some I reason. Think, I, I yeah. think, yeah, that that was something that I didn't think about was um like in high school, I felt like I had all the energy in the world to to go from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and then like do some homework until 1 a.m. and then do it over for a few months. But then I, I felt like I couldn't do that in college. Yeah. I guess the content or just like absorbing everything and digesting like where you are um, took a pretty big toll. So I was pretty tired after a lecture. Yeah. So So yeah, I think um i think getting involved in like just one or two clubs um was was a good thing for me uh, I, i'm th- planning on doing something in addition to c clear and that's probably something i'll stick with until the rest of uh rest of college because because mm-hmm. yeah i oh actually no another thing is i don't think you have to like stay in one club throughout mm-hmm. your entire uh career as well because uh-huh. um and i know a lot of people who like did maybe a sport like a club sport one quarter and then 
chose something else the next quarter. There's a lot of different things that you could do in UCLA and I assume USC as well. So yeah, so you don't yeah you don't have to stick with something like all four years like you would have to in high school right to like get that clout or something yeah you know yeah. to to show wow I I'm committed I stick to something for four years um but yeah oh and also another thing that I tried to get involved in was model UN. Um, mm-hmm. because I did have a speech and debate background and I thought like I could I could do that <laughs> so um, I never had the experience of doing model UN in my high school because we didn't have it so I just had to learn everything by myself and uh, there were a few people on my floor who were who did model UN in high school and um, they like taught me some stuff and our model UN team is like pretty competitive. I think we're like number six in the nation. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Oh, that's intimidating. Whatever. (laughs) I'm going to just try out for it. Uh And then the first time I tried out for it, I got Mm waitlisted and um, they like said, Oh, you could just come to our practices, but you won't be like on the team officially. But I just decided not to go to their practices. (laughs) (laughs) And so I just, Uh. yeah. So then, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I just didn't really, feel as passionate about model UN as I did in speech and debate um, back in high school. I think mainly because um, model UN just kind of felt much more fake than, than what I did in speech and debate. Like speech and debate was pretty fake. All right. Already it was a, it was a pretty, <laughs> yeah. it was a pretty big meme. You know, all these high school students pretending to be politicians and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then here you have model UN um, in order to win, you got to be loud and like, yeah dominant and confident even if your uh evidence and such is, is completely whack like you still got to be confident about it mm-hmm. and i just thought ah, that's this, this is boring <laughs> so like yeah i yeah i kind of lost interest in that um so i started looking to different clubs and stuff yeah no I mean, that was really great i you know i definitely agree with a lot of things and you know i think you know for at least my story it touches up on a lot of what you said like, I think it's true. Back in high school, I was in so many programs. You know, I had to get to school earlier because I was part of the marching band. So I was at school already by like 7 a.m. And then, you know, I would sometimes go home really late because I had other clubs and commitments to do. But yeah, I was like in so many things. I was like, I was doing like marching band, speech and debate as well. Like you did. I was in like the engineering team, mock trial and like, you know, a lot of different activities. And then as soon as I got into college, you know, I thought like, oh, you know, I was able to do it in high school. I held a lot of leadership positions. Maybe I could do the same. And I was like, nah, there's no way. Like I looked at already like when I was doing my schedule before our own club day, I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to like survive doing as what, as like what I did in high school. It's like, it's not possible. So I guess, yeah, I, I actually kind of had to switch that mentality from like, okay, you're not what you used to be in high school. Like things are so different now. You have to start adapting to a new environment. So I was like, okay, just recognizing that was the first thing. So like you, we also had a club day. Ours was, I believe two days and you know, we didn't really have anything. It was literally just called like club fair. I, there was no special name either. Um, but pretty much, if you know USC's like Truesdell Parkway, it's like the one like really long uh, street yeah. in, in the middle yeah. of USC. Yeah. That's where all the clubs would come out. On the first day, there would be some clubs. Second day, there would be other clubs. You know, there'd be frats, um, you know, just other academic teams, just normal clubs. And, you know, when I was looking through it, I was really interested in a lot of them. I wanted to join a dance team, actually. Um, but I was like, you know what? I kind of suck at that, so let's not do that. Um, I thought about doing a Taekwondo club because I've done Taekwondo for a good, like, 14 years of my life. And... I, you know, I went all the way to get a, getting a fourth degree black belt. I was like, you know, maybe I should do it too. And for something that I still did for a good portion of my life, I didn't join that club because one, the scheduling was completely off from what my classes were like and whatnot. And the second was like, I don't think I could have committed to that. And I don't think I saw the same enjoyment in that as I did from, you know, back when I was in high school or middle school participating in Taekwondo. So I was like, yeah, no, nope, I'm not going to bother with doing that. So I ended up joining, um, really a lot of organizations that were very geared towards my major or what I wanted to do. I joined a lot of volunteer organizations. Um, I was tutoring um, kids in LA on the weekends, for example, on Saturday for a program called Teach for LA. Um, I was a part of Trojan Health Volunteers, which allowed me to volunteer at a hospital, kind of see the clinical side of things. You know, obviously with COVID, that thing got (laughs) kind of turned down and whatnot, and some hospitals terminated the programs. But at least for the most part, I was able to, you know, see the hospital experience, what life was like inside of it. Um, you know, obviously, um, as of right now, I'm like currently a part of a research lab. I also kind of work a part-time job as a part of USC's business services. Um, but, you know, in general, it was just finding things that I enjoy doing. Like, I enjoy teaching people. I enjoy volunteering and making other people happy. I think that's what 
makes me kind of motivated to continue working and find a passion to pursue my kind of career goals. So I joined a really a lot of volunteer organizations. You know, I think if I, the biggest regret I probably had was joining something that I thought was just for the sake of having fun. Like, you know, we even have like a Super Smash Bros. club at school. Like, I'm not the best at it. I, maybe I would have considered doing it. But I think it was just finding something that wasn't volunteer service or like academic based. I think that's something I'm probably looking into in the future for doing. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's pretty much how it's been. And, you know, you obviously mentioned how they have like those cultural clubs as well, too. So, you know, being part Korean, I was really interested in, you know, CASA. I'm pretty sure a lot of schools have it. It's like the Korean American Student Association. And I thought about joining it. And I went and the moment I walked into whenever the first like meeting was, Everyone was talking Korean to each other. And I was like, no, nah, I can't speak Korean. I'm out. So I just like left <laughs> as soon as I walked out. I was like, no, yeah, I'm not yeah. I'm not it, was, it was the same for um, mm-hmm. the the Indonesian organization that we that we had at the time. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I actually forgot. To, sorry, yeah, you go, 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 <laughs> I, forgot go, go, go. I forgot to mention this, but um, I like in my um, winter quarter, we created an association for Indonesian Americans because mm-hmm. um, I guess like we didn't feel like we could communicate too well with the like international Indonesian students. Yeah. So, so yeah, we created an organization for that, uh, which I, I'm involved in with now, but, right. but yeah, like the same okay. thing for like, yeah. for, for the Indonesian <laughs> organization. Yeah. yeah. I walked in, I was like, ah, I can't even, I can only read it. I can't speak it. And everyone else was like, just flew me going out. And I was like, and you know, for the most part, you know, obviously I, I eventually learned that, you know, not everyone was speaking Korean. They were speaking English. I was just intimidated because as soon as I walked in, the first thing I heard was Korean, Korean, Korean. I was like, mm, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I, just, yeah. I, I, I straight up left. But yeah, so I, I, I definitely would have probably considered actually staying in that club and seeing what the experience was like, especially since, you know, um, I feel like I haven't really been able to get much of like kind of my Korean culture back here in America because um, my parents actually came over here um, when they were pretty young too, so it's not like they were like straight from Korea, like when they were adults that moved here. So I would definitely enjoy to see that. But I think probably the one big cl- uh, program at USC that they had that um, I actually would like to talk about is we had this thing, it's called a JEP, we call it the Joint Educational Project. And pretty much what it is, is it's another way of getting volunteer service and whatnot. But originally, I wasn't planning to volunteer for them because I actually didn't know what it was. But it was actually in my Spanish class. So I had to take one more semester of Spanish um, because that was kind of required for my major. So in my Spanish class, I had an option to do something for that class. It was either I do this one project that looked way too complicated. And I was like, I'm not doing that project. Or I joined this JEP program and I volunteer at a, a, or I think it was like an elementary school around the LA area that taught their students in both Spanish and English. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty good with Spanish. I should probably give it a shot. So I did the volunteer program. I got matched to a certain school next to USC. And pretty much every week I would go to that school, kind of volunteer for a couple of hours, help teach students, kind of help them even, not even just you know in education aspects, but also on the playground as well too. And I really enjoyed it because not only was I able to like kind of work with kids and like see how much fun it is to actually interact with those students, but for the most part, um, it was actually helping me develop my Spanish because a lot of these students didn't know how to speak English at all. And uh, part of my, my goal was to kind of help them to either speak the other language, whether that be English or Spanish, but at the same time, I was helping them with their homework. So I was ironically having to speak Spanish about math and science concepts that I didn't even know the words to. So like, you know, for the first week or two, I was just kind of like, um, ciencia, uh, and I didn't really know <laughs> what the terms were. When you start giving me a homework with a bunch of biology stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm a bio major, but I don't know half of these terms. So I was like, um, yeah, but that was really interesting because I got a, was able to grow and actually learn from that. Um, I, I was pretty good with Spanish already, and I, I still am today. So I thought it was a really nice experience for me to actually really practice that, kind of learn the words. It really took me back to kind of like that elementary root basics. Like I was helping kids in elementary school with their homework, but on the other hand, they were helping me trying to learn words that I didn't even know what to say. Because for the most part, I was just kind of listening to them, and I was like, mm, yeah, see, see. And I didn't know what the words were. But um, yeah, I think it was, you know, it was a really great experience for me. That was uh probably you know if i could do it again i definitely would and obviously since i didn't have to take another spanish class i didn't join the jep program i joined the other the, like their counterpart which is the trojan health volunteers and i started working in hospital work but you know i really wanted to do that so like i mentioned earlier i did the teach for la and actually a lot of students that um we, we tutor in teach for la are also spanish-speaking students and it kind of fit in my schedule a lot better because it was a weekend program so i was able to do the tutoring on saturday mornings and it didn't conflict with any other clubs you know classes and it was great because I was able to go back into speaking Spanish, but at least, you know, this time it wasn't anything complicated. It was just, you know, math or English. And 
I, you know, I really enjoyed it a lot. So I think it's just finding something that you're really passionate about doing. Um, and for me, that was volunteer and service work. But, uh, you know, like I mentioned, I definitely would have considered going and doing, you know, some fun clubs, whether that be super, just like a super smash Bros club or just even like a sport, I really want to go back and start playing soccer again or, you know, other things out there. So yeah, I, I think that was kind of my experience with extracurricular activities. Yeah. I guess now just to briefly transition to something that's not um, college lifestyle related, uh, college applications. So if you want to, I, I see a smile on your face. It's a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a time. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and uh, I guess, you know, somewhat summarize your college application experience, you know, how did it go for you? All right, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to like recollect the last two years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I guess like I could start with um, how I initially like started thinking about applying to colleges. So I started like really thinking about this um, in my junior year mm -hmm. when, you know, when you're supposed to take your SAT and supposed to take your, uh, like get good grades and everything and boost up your GPA, all, all that good stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. I started thinking about that in the beginning of my junior year because uh, I got, what, wait, what was, what was it called? Okay, no. so, so I, I applied for and um, I was accepted into um, Questbridge, okay. uh, mm -hmm. the College Prep Scholars Program, mm -hmm. um, which like it, I don't, I don't really know what the mission statement is, but like basically what, what it did for me was it showed me like all these different opportunities for uh, all the colleges in the, in the United States. And like um, basically the main goal of Questbridge is to become a finalist and then uh, possibly get matched to um, a school of your dreams and, or whatever, right? And, and like, they'll, they'll give you money to do that. So, so that, that sounded pretty cool. So then I started researching different colleges and um, I, was, I was really looking at like um, the top private schools and everything because with my income bracket, like I could, if I got into those schools, then I would have to pay anything, which sounded great to me. And, yeah, so that that's how I, I started. Um, and in order to apply to Cosper, you like you have to start an application, and it kind of mirrors like the college applications that you might see in the Common App or uh, with um, UC Personal Insight questions. And uh, that just like got my got my brain thinking about uh, what am I going to write about? What is my story? Because like that's the main thing that you have to think about is uh, what is the story that you want to show these colleges, uh, mm -hmm. these advisors, all this all that all that stuff and uh like so throughout my junior year i was taking my sat and i was uh like slowly trying to think about what my story is going to be and um in the summer before my senior year uh you actually apply for this um, other part of Questbridge, which is for the finalist program so college prep scholars is like for juniors and then you apply into the finalists program to try and get matched into a private college. So, so for, for those, for those, for that, it's like stretch of time. I was mainly thinking about private schools, but as you see now I'm at UCLA, which is a public school, <laughs> yeah. number one public school. My dad. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I initially like started thinking, I want to, I want to get into USC. I want to get into, uh, one of the Ivy Leagues, like Yale, or um, I, I don't know. I was like really into into Yale. Like I I really liked Yale for some uh -huh. reason. Like <laughs> I, <laughs> I have a Yale sweater um, that I, that I bought when I went <laughs> and visited, uh -huh. and uh, and I was thinking, dude, if I wear this sweater enough, I'm gonna get into Yale. So like, <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. That was the that was the goal. Okay. Um, yeah but it's okay it, it didn't happen but that's okay um so i i applied for uh i applied for the questbridge finalist program in um in the summer and uh it basically made you write like a bunch of common app like questions mm -hmm. and uh, i got into the finalist program and um i, I remember like quite a few of us at my school got into the finalist program and we were like oh, super awesome. hyped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were, we were super hyped. We were thinking, yeah, we're about to 
we're about to take over these private schools. <laughs> um, but but that didn't happen. <laughs> but um, a, a few of my a few of my friends got matched to um, pretty good private schools, mm-hmm. and um, I was pretty bummed out when like okay, so uh, you have to pick like the priority of schools that you want to um, get into. So I picked schools that were like super dream schools for me, like Stanford, um, Yale and Columbia. And um, I, I didn't get into Stanford, but like one of my friends did during our AP gov class. And like, oh, he's, wow. he, he was like, yeah. And then, and then I was, and then he was like cheering and stuff. And, and I checked and I, 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 I saw the thank you for applying. And, and yeah, I, I was kind of bummed out about that. But yeah, it can we, be. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, to go back a little bit. All right. So I applied to, um, I decided to apply to like a lot of schools because I had fee waivers and I thought, um, might as well, like, you know, make the most out of my money, right? Economics yeah. mindset. <laughs> no, so I, I applied to like, around like 30 schools. Oh, and wow. Then, um, not including like the Cal States and oh, okay. UCs. Uh-huh. Um, like, like with the UC app, like I applied for four because uh, uh-huh. you can get four free uh, fee waivers for the applications. And then for Cal States, I applied to four as well. And then from the UCs, I only got into UCLA, um, which is weird. I, I got waitlisted from UCI and I got waitlisted from UCSD mm-hmm. and I got rejected from Berkeley. Um, but yeah, I found that pretty weird because like I got waitlisted from UCI and UCSD because I, I don't I don't know why. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I thought I thought it would be different. Like I thought it'd be switched to something, but, uh-huh. but no, that that happened. And um, if for Cal State's, um, I applied to uh, Slow, um, CSULB, uh, Cal State LA, and um, one more. Uh, okay, I think it was Fullerton. Yeah, and then I I got into all of them, but they were like just the safeties as yeah. well because like that was my mindset. Like if like there's a high probability I might not get into these these thirty schools that I applied yeah. to. So so you know just just have some safeties. Um, but yeah, I uh, as far as like actually applying to all these schools, I, I brokered my time very very poorly. I didn't. I didn't have a plan on how I'm gonna um, write each of these essays in like a timely manner. So I didn't, I ended up um, having to do a lot of my essays on January 1st. Oh, like the, <laughs> cause like I the thought the short, too. yeah, yeah. I thought the short answers were gonna be like a piece short. of cake, you know? Yeah. 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 Cause think, I, man. yeah. Yeah. I picked, um, I picked like, a pr- um, so what I did is I like kind of copied and pasted my quest bridge essay Uh onto the common app and then i thought all right that's done now i just have to do the short answers um but yeah (laughs) i didn't i wasted so much time i didn't i didn't do that uh properly um i i think i spent the most amount of time ironically on usc i spent the most (laughs) on usc because it was uh, due december 1st i believe for like the merit yeah it was yeah yeah so i I put a lot of time into that essay, didn't get in. Um, I applied for the uh, WBB program, which is like- Oh the yeah, the World's Best. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good program. Yeah, so I, I thought, all right, easy money, but I, I didn't get that. Um, <laughs> but I applied for for my UCs. I, I think I spent like a considerable amount of time. I think I like, um, I, okay. I, I kind of like ditched class like a few times. <laughs> And I would go to our, uh, our, I would go to our like college counseling center, and then mm-hmm. just r- start like keep writing my essays and stuff, uh-huh. and really focusing on it. Um, but honestly, like my PIQs weren't too great. Um, I I think I could have made whatever story about it was better or or something. But I guess like my my story of getting into UCLA is kind of different because. Um, I actually got this uh, supplemental essay thing uh, in January. Like they send me this um, supplemental essay, basically Mm -hmm. like you can write anything you want to show why you should be accepted basically. And Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I searched this up on like Reddit. I searched this. I searched this up like everywhere, <laughs> trying to figure out what this is. Uh -huh. And um, from what I gathered, it was basically a way for UCLA to see um, students who might be on the border of whether they're going to accept them or reject them, um, oh, okay. what they're going to do. So I thought, oh, okay, that's a lot of <laughs> that's that's kind of scary. Uh, so. Um, basically, what this supplemental form was, um, was it gave you 650 words to write anything. And so that's like basically the length of a common mm -hmm. app, um, long essay. And then uh, you write about your, and then you like list out your uh, classes for your first semester in um, senior year. And, and this, I feel like this is what saved me because like in my first semester of senior year, I did really good. I got my highest GPA. In, in high school ever and that was great um and I just copy and pasted my essay from um my common app onto my UCLA app and actually let me tell you a little bit about what that essay was um so it was about my my life as uh as both like sort of like like a low income student or I, I never really thought of myself as low income because mm. um I live in a pretty uh, middle class neighborhood, but I lived in like a room of that middle class neighborhood. So I, I was renting out a room um, inside of a house basically. And I was living there with my mom. And um, yeah, so I never thought of myself as like poor or uh, I don't know, like I, I never thought of myself as uh, as low income until I college. I was like, I, I didn't think of that as a way to like show how I overcome things because I feel like, like, I felt like at that time, I didn't overcome too much. Like, I felt like there wasn't too many barriers that I had. But then looking back and reflecting on my life, like, mm -hmm. there were quite a few barriers that I did have to, uh, did have to overcome. And at the same time, um, this, what I explained in my essay was, uh, I was also known on YouTube as um, this reactor on this, this show called Kids React. Mm -hmm. And that's what people mainly knew me for. Um, and I'm pretty grateful for that. But I felt like it was such a huge contrast to who I was as like this regular high school student um, who was trying to like overcome things and yeah. trying to, uh, you know, like get to college and stuff. And then this, uh, this reactor, this, this mm -hmm. entertainer on, on YouTube or something that um who i mean as a youtuber right it doesn't sh you don't really show like that you have uh at least like on um the kids react show i didn't i didn't explain like oh i'm i i don't have the monies you know <laughs> like yeah like don't, you don't say the challenge you yeah, don't show the challenges yeah, that you face yeah exactly exactly so um i explained that contrast and like talked about the duality of that mm -hmm. um in my in my essay and I was just kind of exploring like how I show myself on the outer side and how um, I perceive myself it, um, within myself, like, like my inner side and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think, uh, I think that's what helped me like try and stand out and try and be unique. Cause not a lot of people have that opportunity to be in the public eye in some sort and uh being able to explain that to ucla i felt like was a pretty good opportunity for me to to get in <laughs> so, so yeah so that um that was a pretty i think that was a pretty big part was making the most out of that supplemental form that they sent me after college apps were done yeah yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I really like that story. I, I really like how you mentioned, you know, what you wrote about it. I mean, obviously, thanks for sharing that. I know it can be something pretty personal. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it, you, you have been known for being on that YouTube channel. And it's a pretty popular one as well, too. And then, like I, I kind of mentioned, you know, people don't see the challenges that you face yourself. And I think that's kind of what college apps are. You know, you get the chance to really explain who you are in those essays. And I guess, you know, while I'm explaining my part, I'll touch up on that a little bit. But so I guess for me, you know, I was fortunate. Enough, I wasn't a first generation student. Um, like I mentioned, both my parents came over here when they were pretty young and they actually attended college at the U.S. So I wasn't like a first generation student. Uh, that being said, when they went to college to versus when I'm applying to colleges, two different time periods, you know, obviously acceptance rate were a lot different. Schools were known for different things and they weren't as developed as they were now. So realistically, I couldn't really ask them for help because it was so long ago that they don't really remember it. 
And at the same time, times have changed. Uh, furthermore, I was the eldest child in my family. Um, so I was kind of like the guinea pig test subject of trying to figure out and navigate this entire process. For me, when it came down to what schools I was going to apply to, obviously being in California, it was the UC schools, and I applied to a lot of privates in state and out of state. I actually didn't apply to a Cal State system because, you know, like I know, like you mentioned, for Cal State, they were like kind of the safety schools. But for me, I kind of, and I guess I kind of want to break down this, um, the notion of community college for a second, is that, you know, I don't think community college is a bad thing. I know many people who go through that route who still go to amazing schools. I know one kid who didn't so, do so well in high school, went to community college, and then he went straight into Harvard as a transfer. I was like, wow, you know, this is a good story. Yeah, like, you know, you don't have to, like, I feel like a lot of people when they think of community college, they think of, oh, is that, those are the dumb poor kids who can't do anything in their lives. But realistically, after I've had the, like, you know, the privilege of being able to talk to those students, I realized, you know, they all come from different backgrounds. You can't expect um, high school to be where you're going to peak at. And that's because of it. That's how it's going to dictate yourself. So I told myself that if I didn't get any of the colleges in the UC system or private schools, I would just go to PCC and just transfer afterwards. Or if I didn't get a good financial aid from the ones I were accepted, I would still go to PCC while it's still cheaper and then, you know, transfer from community college to somewhere else. Yeah. That being said, um, I didn't apply to like 30 schools. I applied to uh, six UC schools and eight private schools. Um, and you know, the UC schools, I did every single one except for LA, Merced, and Santa Cruz. For privates, I was doing Stanford. I applied early for that. USC, Northwestern, Northeastern, um, NYU, Syracuse, Santa Clara University, and Arizona State. And I will say Arizona State was actually not one I was planning on applying to, but then I visited the campus over summer. I actually really liked it. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to do it. It has no essays. It's cheap. I'm going to apply. So I applied that one. It was, it was really easy to do. But for the most part, at least for me, um, I went to a very competitive high school. You know, a lot of kids really cared about uh, GPA. Uh, a lot of kids cared about getting, you know, officer positions in clubs or whatnot. And I really hated that. Like I said, I'm not a very competitive person. I like, I prefer cooperation a lot more than competition. So while everyone else was competing to get the highest grades, I was trying my best to bring a group of friends together who, you know, I knew wanted to succeed entirely. To, and I tried to bring them together rather than kind of put us separate apart. Because for me, I don't find, like, I don't understand how a person, at least in my opinion, how you can put other people down or try to make yourself seem better and how people will feel good about that versus when I get the satisfaction of actually helping people and if they succeed as well too, then in some sense, I've succeeded as a person in my own sense. So that's why I was really into that. But, you know, my high school obviously um, didn't promote that kind of ideal. Every kid was like, oh, I got to get into an Ivy League school. I got to get into the top 20. I got to be a doctor. I got to be an engineer. And so the entire time I was struggling with trying to really stay true to myself because there have been moments where I was so close to being that competitive person where I was like, okay, now I got to edge myself compared to everyone else. But obviously I didn't want to do that. So I was fortunate enough that I was still able to stay true to myself and I'm really glad that I did that. Um, yeah, but for me, you know, getting information about college was pretty much through the internet. Kind of like you mentioned, you know, you search things up on Reddit, you search things up online. Um, it was a lot of internet searching. Uh, I used a lot of school resources. I was fortunate enough that we had college ambassador visits coming to our school. So I took advantage of those, got to hear from all the schools. That's actually what prompted me to apply to like schools like Santa Clara University. I've never heard of that college until senior year, but they're like, oh yeah, it's a great school. And I actually really like the way she was trying to sell it to us. So I applied to that school. Um, and then, you know, for the most part, everything was just kind, of, just kind of like, you know, doing those things over and over. That's how I got my research, uh, you know, and then it came down to the essays. And I think that was probably the biggest thing as well, too, because they were time consuming. Um, just like you, I had a lot of extracurriculars and I was still managing school at the same time. Ironically, I'm surprised that I never ditched a class or I was never sick in my first or second semester of senior year. Like, ironically, I didn't ditch anything. I was one of those seniors who, um, yeah, I, I definitely know there's a lot of seniors who actually do ditch classes to write their essays. I ironically didn't do that. And I don't want to say it's because I had really good time management or that I'm just a naturally smart kid because I think I'm far from that. Um, I'm just surprised I didn't do it. I think for me is like, I still wanted to balance on myself because I understand that, you know, life's going to be tough. But if you have to start missing a couple things, then maybe you're not doing something right. So I was just trying to try my best to balance everything out. When it came to the essays, um, I definitely procrastinated on a little bit, especially for schools that I thought were more safety than others. Um, and like you, when I thought, oh, the short answers are going to be so easy. And I read that I'm like, oh, this is, why is this like a theory based question? Like sometimes they'll give you something. I'm like, uh, I don't know how to answer that. So I was like, it was, a, it was like weird. But for the most part, I tried really hard on the uh, personal statement and the personal insight questions for the UC schools. And since the UC application was due in like November or like late November, early December, I was like, okay, this will be done super fast. Once I get the UC apps done, I can go ahead and get started on the rest. So it was really the UC apps and also USC because I applied for the December 1st date. 
um, that I was focusing on doing first. And so I thought I did really that well on those. Um, obviously, Stanford was early as well, too, so I had to try for that. And then the other colleges, because I didn't really see them as ones that I would probably attend to, I just kind of BSed it because, like I mentioned before, I kind of regret not realizing that I should have applied to schools that I'm really interested in going to, not just for the sake of it. And those other schools were kind of just for the sake of it. Like, realistically, if I could do it over again, I probably would have only applied to Stanford, USC, and the UC schools. But, you know, I did those apps. Then the essays were tough because I was trying so hard to write what I thought the colleges wanted to hear rather than what I wanted to say. Because if I truthfully said what I wanted to say, I'll be honest, I'll probably end up be criticizing the entire educational system or just a bunch of things over and over. And I didn't want them to think, oh, this kid's a punk. We're not going to take him. So it was hard because for me, I was trying to fabricate a personality that I, it wasn't me. And in hindsight, even though I got accepted to a good portion of the college that I applied to, I don't think I wasn't happy with what I said because it wasn't me. And I would say, you know, for students, at least watching this, that you should write about something that you want to say rather than what you think the college will want to hear because it makes the writing process a lot easier. So that's kind of the, how the entire essay process went for me. It was actually a, a challenge trying to unite my own personality versus what I thought colleges would want in the same field. And, you know, I wasn't like the best writer in the world too. I didn't have like eloquent like diction or whatnot, but for the most part, I was trying my best to just please colleges rather than um, understand what I really wanted to say. Then, you know, it comes around uh, college out seasons. There's obviously a lot of wait lists. There's a lot of this, this, and that. And then obviously acceptance start rolling in. And, you know, actually the story you mentioned about how you had that one friend who was in a QuestBridge thing who got accepted at Stanford and you checked your phone at the same time. Um, it actually happened to me too. And, and I didn't actually, I wasn't the one who saw the letter. I was looking at all my friends who, I don't even remember what school it was, but some school came out on that day and one kid got in and the rest of the kids were checking their phone. And like half of them looked depressed afterwards. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like that's when I realized like, it's going to be rough. <laughs> like the acceptance letter, it's going to be rough. Um, There's going to be tears and whatnot. And, you know, at least for me, I was just, I think the moment that I, I got accepted just to, to just one college, not a sense of relief, but I was like, oh, wow, like all my hard work paid off. Like, even though first semester senior is going to be intense, I think once you, I don't know, when I, once I reached that first acceptance letter and it was from a pretty decent college that I was applying to, in my opinion, I was like, wow, like all my hard work paid off. Life is great. I can finally sleep well at night. So um, for the most part, that's kind of how, um, that went for college applications. And, you know, I think, like I mentioned, I think the biggest regret I have is not writing an essay that was about myself. Like I was already struggling to not turn into that competitive mindset. And when I already decided to transition myself in the essays to say like, oh, I'm just going to write things that I think Stanford wants to hear. I'm just going to write things I think, you know, the UC schools want to hear. It made it a lot harder. And I was already, I think, you know, ironically, it wasn't even an academic issue I was having. It was more of like a personal issue I was having throughout the college application process. So mm -hmm. at least for me, yeah, I think yeah. that's how kind of my story went. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I think this is a good way to kind of sum up the entire, summarize or conclude our entire video. But um, I mean, did you have any other closing remarks you wanted to make before we wrap this up? Um, I think I just want to like talk about some things that kind of resonate with me. Mm -hmm. Like just trying to, um, like as I said, I applied to like, a lot of schools and I wish I just applied to a few schools and just left it at that because I applied to schools just because like I, I wanted like that idea of oh if I get into this school and I go to that school I'm going to be known as that person who made it out and like got into that school and um and and yeah that was kind of like the idea that I was chasing but um what I should have really focused on was what schools really suited me, what, what, what schools would like be a great place for me to be at. And actually mm -hmm. at the time, I wasn't thinking about UCLA. I wasn't thinking that UCLA would be the, mm -hmm. the school that would um, suit me the most. And it wasn't until like after I got accepted and um, started thinking about actually living at UCLA that I realized like it's basically the perfect school for me because I, um, I lived I've lived in Monterey Park most of my life. So that's mm -hmm. like, you know, east of LA. And then at UCLA, it's like west of LA. So, yeah. you know, it, yeah, yeah to, to me, it, it seemed like a great opportunity to um, just learn more about the city of Los Angeles and become like someone from Los Angeles, you know? <laughs> and um, it, it became, um, but, but the thing is, 
is that I never thought about UCLA as like the school that I would go to. Uh, like I thought of it as a, as a great school, like as a school that would be great to get into, but um, like some would say like a target school, right? But um, I I never like pictured myself at UCLA until I got in and mm -hmm. it was my uh, top choice. Um, but yeah, I think I wish I could have focused more on, yeah, like the, the schools that, uh, the schools that interested me the most, like USC. Um, but I was spread out. Like I was uh, thinking about all these different college applications about these colleges and like different parts of the country that I would never go to, but, <laughs> but mm, I, yeah. I decided to just apply because for the heck of it yeah, for the and idea. yeah and also the idea of um not really like sharing your your story um in the college apps i think i think it's really hard to share your story and mm -hmm. share everything that you want to say because there's just so much to say about your life you know and yeah and um colleges are very they want something very specific like they want yeah. these uh they say holistic, but it, you know, it's, it's really like this, like these very specific things, like um, specialties, I guess, or, or yeah, something. It's very, they, it's, they, it's, yeah. yeah, I would say it's ironic because they have, they want specific requirements, but it's also very ambiguous what those specific requirements are. Yeah. 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 Like you, yeah. Like you'll see people with um, crazy scores and everything get rejected mm -hmm. from top schools, maybe yeah. because they weren't, they didn't have this thing about that. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, yeah. No, it's I, just, you don't use the yeah. Motive. yeah how to explain it yeah 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 my my mindset um while I was applying to colleges and after I finished my applications was like all right well I know the college system is kind of messed up because this was also the time during like the Harvard scandal going oh, yeah, out, right. you know and also um people really questioning what do these schools want uh like what do these elite schools want right and are they just like schools for the most elite people or, or what do they, what do they freaking want? Right. So that, uh, that played in my mind. So um, basically my mindset was, all right, I'm done with this. I don't care. Like, I mean, I do care if I, uh, like, I'm not going to cry or I'm not going to be super happy, but like that, that's, that's kind of how I felt about it. Like if I get in, I get in, if I don't, I will. Um, mm -hmm. And also that part about community colleges, like I definitely agree because mm -hmm. I know some really, really smart people who went to community colleges um, because of their circumstances, because, you know, college for a lot of people isn't that affordable. It's not yeah. like the best financial choice. Um, so going to community colleges, college for two years or like for one year and trying to uh, trying to like save money, it could be a good option and people shouldn't shy away from that. And um, yeah, I think, I think also the way I thought about college was like um, you don't really need college in order to be successful in what you want to do in life because there, there are different ways to get to whatever you want to do, whether it be like make a lot of money or change the world socially. There's a lot of different ways of doing that and college isn't the only way of doing it. But I, I thought about it in, in my head as like just, um, college would be like a way to be on the track to do something great or, yeah. uh, have like a higher chance of being successful. Mm -hmm. And, um, that was just my mindset about it. And, and yeah, uh, yeah, I, I knew that I would get like part, a good amount of financial aid. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know that a lot of people aren't able to get financial yeah. aid. And yeah, sometimes college is pretty hard to, pretty hard to uh, be a part of. I mean, like, yeah, no, it's a tricky. Part of it. just, it's tricky. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would say like, if if you're kind of stuck with um, with trying to show who you really are, then um, I don't know what what I did was I just. I just, I just took a break. I took a break from writing when I was writing about myself um, for the common apps. And, 
and I just I took a break. I didn't think about it, and then I would go back and and start writing a bit more. And like I would try and get something to fill that 650 words. And uh, yeah, the the story doesn't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. I think that's what people have to also understand. Like yeah, like like there's these organizations like Elite or like um, yeah. these uh, yeah like these different companies that try and like craft this perfect story yeah. that you have to pay like huge sums of money to. Thousands and I think yeah, like you you don't have to have the perfect story. It doesn't have to be like super, super well crafted, but Mm -hmm. you just have to put the time into it Mm -hmm. because, um, because yeah, I, I don't think they're expecting like a super perfect story, just like something that's well crafted. Yeah. I think that's entertaining as well. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. These, these college app people, they're, uh, they're probably tired, you know, like reading through all these essays. Mm-hmm. I think um, exactly. yeah, it's trying to find something unique to talk about yourself. Yeah, it's 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 tough. It's tough to yeah, it's it tough to is. figure that out. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, and, but I don't I don't think you have to be the person in your essay. Like you you don't. Uh, I guess you don't have to. Um, you don't have to be like the perfect embodiment of what you are in your essay mm. because it's going to be hyperbolized in some yeah, way because yeah because it is a story um you're going to dramatize dramatize it in some way and yeah i i don't think they should be stuck on thinking oh no this isn't actually me mm-hmm. because it won't be it won't be actually you because you're you're crafting that this true, story yeah. yeah so um i hope that students who are watching this don't don't stress too much about that aspect Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's uh it's a pretty fun process and i'm glad i got through it yeah i'm glad you got through it too (laughs) yeah i mean for sure i mean we're here today it's a learning process you know as much as you know it's funny because a lot of people i I actually ask a question i ask them um sometimes you know if you regret or would change anything would you and it's actually the hardest question i ask because a lot of students i actually surprisingly got the answer of they wouldn't change or they don't regret anything because it was a learning process. I, I truthfully believe that things happen um, for a reason. So, if, you know, if you've gotten to where you are because of however you approached it, you know, it's, it's a stepping stone. It's, it's necessary for moving on. And I guess for me, you know, just on some like closing, I guess, comments on my end, I guess not really just about college in general, but just for people watching this, I, I probably should have said this earlier in the video in the beginning. It's kind of like a, like a disclaimer, but um, obviously we're just two people with our own opinions on mm-hmm. the entire thing. Obviously what we're saying is not the truth for everyone. It's not indicative of what the average student is like or what yeah. everyone should fall to be but i just hope that you know for everyone watching this that you know whether you take our advice and use it whether you compare it alongside other people's where you can like take the entire video and just throw it in the garbage can or something like that like regardless that we just hope that it just gave you some insight to kind of think about it and reflect on it obviously we're not claiming to be perfect you know we're not counselors or advisors or anything we're just two college students who are stuck yeah. at home quarantine just trying to give <laughs> advice but um, yeah, obviously, I think, you know, just concluded, uh, I guess, first and foremost, I want to thank you, Dylan, for taking the time to talk with us in this video. And I, obviously, for in your specific platform as well, too, I hope um, a lot of people get some information from at least what both of us have said. Um, yeah. I guess just, you know, another thing to close off with is obviously for people who are on my channel and my project watching this video, please check out um, Dylan's channel because he has a lot of great videos as well too they're, they're, i've seen some of your videos they're pretty interesting so yeah, okay. definitely, definitely definitely check them out as well too um we'll obviously link that in the description and then i, I guess dylan if you wanted to close off with anything all right yeah i'll well yeah everyone watching this video please check out christian's channel uh-huh. um when once they get it up and everything yeah um, yeah it'll be up by then but so yeah 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 but thank you for i mean this opportunity to just share my story too because mm-hmm. Um, like I've been thinking about how am I gonna share my story about college as well because um, I think yeah I think sharing stories is really important and like sharing perspectives is really important so thank mm-hmm. you for like starting this and yeah, having sure. this idea and yeah and just like taking the initiative on everything it's really good yeah and yeah. obviously we're we're doing this to help you guys like we said we're not claiming to be perfect people or the people that you should be listening to all the time but uh, yeah I obviously hope you know, whether you're watching Dylan's channels, whether, whatever he posts or my stuff that, you know, keep in mind, especially in the way things are turning around the world that um, no one's perfect. Just understand 
keep things civil, like, you know, understand and learn from people. Um, it's a great way to kind of just think and imagine things. But yeah, I mean, other than that, obviously, we want to thank you so much. And I guess that pretty much concludes our video. All right. Thank you.